Hello friends, my name is Christy Rice and if you're new here, I am obsessed with watercolor and in today's live, we are going through this book, Vibrant Watercolor Birds by fellow artist Madhu S. She is the founder of Femme Visionary and I'm going to share a little bit more about that and her with you soon, but I just want to say I am terrified of painting animals, even birds, which are a little less terrifying, but they're still in the scary, scary department. So the fact that I am here and you're gonna watch me be scared, but still do the thing, still paint, um, makes it even more terrifying. But I wanna prove a point, And the point is, is that we, we really stretch ourselves when we do the scary, stuff. Now, if you're watching this on replay, I want you to get into comments right now, if you would, and just say team replay or something, just so that I know you're here and the comment pops up and I'll be able to say hey as well. And just be aware that amazing conversations unfold in the comment section on this channel. It happens every time and I love it. So definitely get involved, definitely ask questions and um we will i do my best to stay on top of comments but honestly you might get an answer you'll likely get an answer from somebody else in the comment section which is fantastic so um <clears throat> so let's get down to the painting table so today i'm going to be using two palettes i've got the art for joy sig palette of course uh because i'm addicted to it and can't stop using it and i'm also using ocean paper if you're curious about the supplies that i'm using they're always gonna be listed down below in the description. I've got a bunch of my brushes, um, just a selection from my two sets, the Free From Fear and the Art for Joy State collections. And then I also have my travel. Um, I got some pencils here. I got, I got a lot of things. And I'm going to go small. I've got Academy Rough watercolor paper and then Academy, um, just normal cold press. So I've got those at the ready. These are a five by seven size. And yes, if you're already excited by what you're seeing here, I mean, this is pretty. I mean, just looking at this, it's pretty, right? Um, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like, friends, and it really helps out my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm figure out who likes and therefore who else new needs to see my videos. And so, yeah. Let's take a look at comments. All right, hey Nessa, hey Tammy, thanks for the boops. Wonder Woman from Switzerland, it's 7.15 p.m. And you had a lovely spring day, that's awesome. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, let's take a look at this book. So what I immediately, um, when she reached out, I was like, do you wanna check out a copy of my book? I'm like, I absolutely do. But of course the fear already started like building up in me. But what I adore about this book is her style. Madhu's style really resonates with me. She does a lot of like the color kind of bumping, the wet on wet that I do. Um, you can see here, it's extremely fresh. It does not feel traditional, but still very realistic in my opinion. Um, just enough detail. And then this juxtaposition of really cute, like a mallard duck with these really cute leaves. I mean, are you kidding me? Um, oh, and the puffin. I, I had a hard time deciding what I was going to paint today, or at least what I was going to start with painting. Um, but I mean, look at the little parakeets. But they're still like, they're cute. It's traditional. It's a traditional subject matter. I mean, birds pop up throughout art history, you know? And... Um, but it this is done in such a, a luscious, fresh way. I mean, look at the kingfisher. Is that what it's called? Yeah, kingfisher. Look, look at it. And these little bubbly moments. Oh, I love it. Budgies are a favorite pet in Australia. Honestly, I, I had, it's funny, I, I never called them budgies. I called them parakeets, but I've had quite a few parakeets in my time. I had a lovebird also that talked. His name was Chili. And he said, chili bird, bird, bird. Um, and he was hysterical, but actually he was a she. Got very mean towards the end of her life because, I don't know, she was just crabby. 
but it was cool that she talked. So anywho, now let's take a quick look. I'm going to share my screen with you. I want you to see um, just a little bit more about Madhu and, um, you know, the just the beautiful work that she does. Uh, it's quite incredible. And there we have it. Um, so this is Femme Visionary. This is her brand. She does uh, just a ton of education. She has a painting club. Um, here we go. So it sounds a lot like kind of, uh, you know, monthly, monthly uh, benefits. So it sounds like Patreon. Yeah, very cool. Love it. So definitely check out Madhu. Give her a hey, especially on Instagram. She's quite active there, I believe. Yeah, like she's over there doing her thing. Um, she reached out last night when she saw me post and was like, yay, finally. So um, definitely give her a follow over there if you haven't already. Um, just, oh, I, I'm super just inspired by her work, how she lays down color. Um, oh, here she's using the, the markers, the water-soluble markers. There's her book. Like, look at this. Look at the way. Okay, wait. I want to go to the end. How do I go to the end of this? But I love the way she lays down color. I love the way mixed media, which, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan fan. Um, oh, it's not showing what I want it to show. Sorry. Here we go. Look at how she's laying down the color. Very intentional strokes. And then I want to try this with a fountain pen. Look. Look at that fountain pen linear detail over those leaves. I can't even handle it. So gorgeous. Anywho, so that is Maju, and I'm honored to be painting from her book today. So what I chose <coughs> was this little guy to start with, the brown sparrow. Oh, gosh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Okay, because I just love, I love the color palette. I adore the color palette. I love the branch that turns into these just whimsical leaves. Um, so yeah, so now she's using materials, cold press paper, pencil, kneadable eraser, regular ones, fine, palette, glass cup, round brush size four, a liner brush, yeah, tissue paper, wait, what? Wait, I did not read enough about that. What is the tissue paper for? Hold the phone. What? Uh, I, is she, I don't know. Okay, we'll get there when we get there. So I love this as well. Hold on, I got to break this binding. Sorry, I am very hard on my books. She starts with the sketching detail. So we will be starting there. I find that extremely helpful. Like she's showing you the basic shapes, kind of this like gumdrop shape intersecting with this, almost like an upside down egg, right? And then washes detailing. I love how she gives you a close up on kind of what type of um, textural stroke she's using for feathers, jagged lines, that kind of thing. And she does it throughout the instructional pages, right? She does it again here, cluster of dashes. And then she does it here again with the tail feathers or the wing, actually. Yeah, that's the wing. So, anywho. Yeah, I feel like her style is very similar to mine, Jennifer. But back to Karen and her cockatiel. Yes, my uh, my dear, my best friend who lives right up the road, she's a bird person. Um, she's had all the kinds of birds. She had a cockatoo at one point. She had conures, very, very foul conure my friend had. Like kind of like you know how cats are sometimes, like just foul to everyone except one person. Well, she had that in a bird. This Conyer was, ooh, his name was Buddy, and it, ooh, he was so mean. <clears throat> but then she had cockatiels that would just like come up and nuzzle you right here. I love that. And my chili bird would, um, it's kind of inappropriate, but my chili bird would come out of the cage. And because, um, you know, like if you're a bird owner, you, you know, you know, the birds don't stay in the cages. They shouldn't stay in the cages a lot. You let them out and they sit on the cage and they sit on you. And anywho, he would come up, he, she would come up and like sit right in my decollete and just like let me cuddle in the early part of her life. Not when she became crabby and sassy. Anyway, <clears throat> I really love birds. Um, and 
I feel like cockatiels, generally speaking, with my experience, are some of the kindest. But it sounds like you got sassy one. <laughs> okay, yeah, the bird loves your grandson. Um, <laughs> and no one else. Oh, okay, so that's a Conyer thing. Okay, this bird was, I mean, he would like go for the jugular, literally. <sighs> like right there. Arr! Yeah, he was terrible. He was terrible, terrible bird. Very lovely, beautiful bird. But <clears throat> yeah, anywho. I digress. So let's get into this. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to go with the regular cold press first as to not further challenge myself. And let me get these up here, get them sprayed down. But we are going to sketch first and I'm, you don't have to look at my face through all this. We're just going to get the painting table going here as I'm painting. I'm just here. I've got no one moderating. If you have a question, I may miss it. What's going to help me not miss it is if you put a couple question marks in front of your question, and that will help me see it better. If I don't answer your question within about five or so minutes, ask it again so that it can get, you know, in the feed, in kind of my current feed again. All right. Sound good? Okay, cool. All right. New mouse palette. That's funny, Nicole. All right. So pencil. Um, this one's really, this is an HB. I want a, a softer one. Well, not softer. I actually want a lighter one. It's a harder one. All right. So we're going to go with, first of all, uh, do I want to go this way? Maybe yeah, I think I do. Cause I want to leave room for those lovely, lovely leaves. We're going to start with my upside down egg and I, I'm, I'm thinking ahead to, uh that branch let me see where the bird's butt kind of intersects with the branch oh it doesn't it goes above hey okay hold on hold on yeah i don't i don't have a needed eraser i use them so little when i do get one um even if i put them in that cute little container they um they dry out anywho whatever Moving on. Okay, so his butt. Gotta make sure I have enough room. So upside down egg right here, right? And then a little gumdrop. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know. Who's painting along? Go ahead into comments and let me know if you're painting along. Because I want to know. Get that beak going. I'm using really, really light pressure here, friends. And I am also, as I'm sketching all of this, all of these moments in, I'm really just keeping an eye on like, I'm comparing like this, where the neck starts, the curve of that. Like, I think this actually needs to be a little, like come up here a little bit more towards this area of the butt, right? I'm paying attention to, I'm basically paying attention to like spatial relationships. That back has a little more of a hump. So I'm I, I, I keep going back to that concept with Sarah Simon, where she talked about that one true line, right? I'm going to get that back feather in. Now, friends, mine is not going to be an exact replica of, of Madhu's, and yours is not going to be a, an exact replica of Madhu's. I am noticing that the top of this tail feather lines right up with that wing. So I think that is actually an important kind of me measurement to to stick with, right? And um, yeah, I'm just kind of looking ahead to how these shapes were edited. I'm kind of now going ahead into this area and to how the chest kind of, that shape gets edited a little bit. So does it down here kind of get those little like, those little like bump it or bump outs or cutouts or whatever you want to call it where where you know the feathers kind of spread apart and they almost remind me a lot of like flower petals you know flower petals kind of do that um they fray almost at the end well so do feathers right i've got this really pointed and i'm not quite sure how i feel about it yet but <clears throat> always Feel like, feel free to look ahead to see if there's things in the photos coming up that are would be helpful to you. I'm going to get those feet in there. Noticing that that back foot is thicker for some reason. 
but you know, I'm here for it. If somebody's telling me what to do, I'm going to try to do it. Like I am here for it. I'm also noticing that the tail feathers, okay, almost line up at a slight angle with those feet, right? Can everybody see this? Let me take a look at comments just to see how we're doing. Karen's painting flowers. Awesome. Um, you're going to be able to rewatch this. If you, if not paint along now, you're going to easily be able to rewatch this and paint right along because I'm showing you enough of the book. I mean, even to the point, I think you could pause this and read the descriptions, right? Yeah. Uh, then you know what? I'm sorry. I'm like stuttering because Gila or Gila, I'm not sure how to pronounce, but tell me and I'll write down a note so I don't forget. But if you've already painted a lot today, just hang, just hang with us. <laughs> Focus, please. Um, is that for me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so proud of you for painting birds. Thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, the under fluffies, that's right, Nessa. They are the under fluffies. Indeed, indeed. So back to Val's question. Um, Val, yes. Send an email to hello at christyrice.com. Attention, Kristen. Um, we have single brushes. So basically what we'll do, uh, they're, they're kind of our seconds. We don't have individual ones that are perfect. Uh, we have seconds. Um, you know, that just maybe have a little weird coloring defect in the handle or something like that. I will let Kristen know you're going to be emailing and um, she'll, you know, we'll sell them to you at a, a deep, deep discount if that sounds good. <clears throat> okay. Gila. Gila. Did I say that? G, G for Gila? I'm hoping, I'm hoping I got your point. Never heard of Painted Wing. Is she on YouTube? Painted wing. Okay. All right. Loving, love watching this live. I'm so glad my very disconnected live. Um, oh, Julie, I'm so glad this is your first. Christy, it is easiest to learn from people doing stuff for the first time. You will be excellent because you're good at control and all the watercolor techniques. Well, thank you. I do feel like my bird has a little bit of a hunchback currently. So I'm going to just kind of get in here and work out um, the head in hopes that that will inform the back a little. There we go. I think that's a little better. And, but then again, like, oh, I'm gonna compare the angle here. Yeah. Oh, show. That angle was off. See what I did there? Did you see it? Did you see it? I hope you did. I hope you did. And then this is coming down straighter and the chest is bumping out even more. I've got, I've got too much. I'm giving my birdie a little bit of a, like a, like a, like a double chin that he doesn't need. Right. Being careful to not get in that eraser loop. That is so, so easy to happen. And this is kind of like, I see what I'm doing here too that's wrong. <clears throat> I'm going to get out of here soon because I can feel myself going into that eraser loop and I don't want that. So I'm just going to be moving on soon. I talk about that. When you feel that happening, you sometimes you just got to like get get on and get done kind of a thing, right? I'm gonna fix some of these tail feathers. And then we will be on our way. A little bit bigger here. When does she put the eye in? <laughs> I, want, I feel the need to put the eye in. I need to see where I'm at. <clears throat> Good enough. All right, that is it for now. I'm going to start with my number six round. She talks about a number four. Um, and we're just going to get some of the washes in. So let me spray these paints again because I sprayed them a while ago. Remember, I'm using ocean paper and I'm using 
my own Art for Joy Sake palette. All of the links for supplies are below. I'm gonna go in and use kind of my my very kind of ivory-ish um, paints in this palette. I want you to see some of this. And we're gonna go ahead with the initial washes. Now, it's very likely that I might get a little more funky funky with my washes. So just bear, bear with me. Get a little pinkiness in here. And I'm, I did that initially wet on dry. I'm purposely going to try to keep this, this area here light as, um, as the book suggests. Okay, cool. All right. And okay, we got a little wash on the feet. Do, do, do. Very light. Just going to kind of tap. There's a definite kind of um, like a cloudiness almost to her washes. And um, in terms of texture, not in terms of like um, transparency or anything. So almost like a little bit of, I'm putting in a little purple, but I'm just dabbing it in ever so gently. For the, over here, there's there's kind of a something going on, right? I'm going to put a little bit of my kind of opaque pink. And then this head is definitely more, a little more intensity in terms of value. Everything is very damp right now. I wouldn't say very damp. I would say moderately damp. I love how she just lets the cauliflowering go. Um, I didn't really get that in my in my situation. I'm gonna blot right here. There we go. And okay, so now we kind of probably should let this let this hang. We could mm, we should let her dry. Should let her dry. I'm not gonna push it. Not gonna push it down. I find it interesting that this kind of changed pretty significantly. But you know what? Honestly, like building a book is so so difficult when you go from image to image, um, and it's so easy for for kind of things like that to happen. Now it could be that she lightened things. So let's so let's read. For this step, let's focus on adding bright chrome yellow and mahogany to our bird. Mahogany can be in the mix. Um, add chrome yellow. Okay, now she doesn't talk about fill the base of the bird. Use shell pink. Oh, she did use shell pink just like I did while skipping the beak and some of the tail feathers. Allow to dry. So, I, yeah, I'm not quite sure, like, why there's this color shift. Um, if I had to guess, and, like, really, it is not a big deal. Cause like you do you boo between these two, <laughs> like really, um, it could be that she's trying to represent too that, you know, watercolor typically lightens as it dries. Um, so I don't know, but it doesn't matter. So again, you do you. I am going to add a little even more of the shell pink and then I've got a clean, ish dry brush and I'm just trying to soften um and I want to get this to dry Ugh. dry dry so so far while that's drying I have used from my palette this ivory color here just so you can get a sense of the colors I'm using in case you know you don't have access, full access to this book if you don't own this book, but I, I would I would recommend it's very affordable. I have the link below. It's in my Amazon store. I used a little bit of this purple, kind of watered down, um, that was already on my mixing palette, so something along those lines. And I used a little bit of this. It's kind of almost like a bubblegum pink that was already on my mixing tray. So basically it was like the shell pink. I added a tiny bit of fluorescent and a teeny tiny bit of my red and really watered it down. So these are the colors that I use so far. 
as my paint dries, because I have a fan on especially, I am watching out for any weirdness. Okay, let me look at questions and see where we're at. <clears throat> um diane antone i have i don't know if i've watched any of her tutorials uh let's see here it's already cute the little eye and the shape is cuter than the original well thanks i don't know i was just trying to i love the original so i'm really trying to like um copy i really i really love that her bird really doesn't feel like he has a hunchback mine definitely feels like he's kind of about to topple forward <laughs> but i also have a sharper angle here that i'm kind of preparing for um for i don't know i don't know why i did it actually i'm wondering did i mean for this belly to go down here and then flutter up i think i'm gonna go with that but um you know this is why it's also super helpful to kind of like Take a step back, hang tight, take a sippy of your drinky drink, right? Because you see things. Yeah, I think I actually meant for that belly to, I pulled it back too much. So that could be part of the reason why my bird, oh, I, yeah, I see another issue. I don't recommend doing what I'm doing here, erasing into areas that could be damp. So again, this area is just wrong. And then this kind of juts out. Anyway, I'm just fussing. I'm adding texture early. Okay, I'm happy, happier with that for sure. Okay. And then I will, I'm now thinking ahead to, okay, I know I'm going to hit it hit it hot and fast with the orange for the beak and the legs and it's it's uh it's more intense in terms of value so i'm going to be able to completely like just rein in this area but in the next step right so i am going to force myself now to just stop it and step away from the bird um and let her dry because i know that as i continue we're going to be adding more intense values and I can kind of notch in and edit and correct. So is cold and is just being fluffy. That's true. He's comfortable. He's getting himself all settled in on his branch. That's right. I can't, I still can't get out of the fear mode with drawing. This makes me want to try it. Please try it. Actually, because let me try it because of what I'm about to show you. All right, I gotta keep my page here. If anybody is watching over on, on Instagram stories, I've been vlogging a lot about my uh, my journal. Actually, I'm going to go grab it. This is the journal. Uh, and anyway, things need to dry. So <clears throat> that I've been working on, still working on the title. It, this is all getting changed. But we have been debating on the title because, okay, I need to grab one more thing. Wow, I'm so disconnected today. Ralph, you can edit out this mess until I get myself situated here with all the things I need. <clears throat> so we have been debating the title of this bad boy. This is just like black and white. So I felt like this was my first stab at the title because this journal, it's a watercolor sketchbook really is what it is. But because of the content that I'm putting into it and the instructional pages, it's also a journal to work through some stuff. So my original idea was frustration recovery, recovery journal. So the idea was that you come here, I'm going to give you super easy projects <clears throat> that are not only easy, but are kind of enlivening. They kind of recharge your spirit. They make you feel better about your art life. They kind of give you a respite. I like that word from your big project that maybe is really ticking you off at the moment. So they're going to be these mini projects. So like this is one of them, the personal rainbow. And I just talk about kind of finding solace and how colors bleed together. And, and in every project, I explain how to do it. I show you the results. And then I give you things to think about as you paint. So yeah. Um, 
that is kind of where this bad boy is at. So you guys are getting an extra deep look at this. So there's here's all the projects. And then there's a section for when you just have no ideas. And then in between the sections are all the blank watercolor paper pages. It is going to be cold press, wood pulp paper. Don't come at me. It is a paper that is very, very, very close to the Gen Crafts wood pulp paper that you know I actually love for practice and sketching. Um, I did a whole video about it, so don't come at me. And the other reason I love this paper is because you can use markers with it. You can use watercolor markers with it. 100% um, cotton paper typically does not do well for um, a variety of media, whereas a wood pulp paper, in my experience, does better. So, anywho, we have been going at it, finding a more positive way of expressing this title. And these were the three that were in the top top three places, the Creative Haven Journal, the Creative Retreat Journal, and this last one was the number one vote so far, the Creative Revival Journal. So anywho, just wanted to give you a little looky-loo at that. And it's going to come in a cute box, and I'm still working through the issues. Like, see how that didn't want to close? I am, like, being so annoying with my manufacturer. I'm like, that needs to never happen. So we're changing the diameter of these and changing the way they kind of lock together back here um, so that it always closes seamlessly. So anyway, <clears throat> I think we're dry enough. Let me take a look at questions. Uh, wonderful. Just set a new idea for you. Thank you, Nicole. Oh my goodness. I've been blind in my left eye all my life. Your right eye compensates. Interesting. Love revival, says Nessa. Highly meaningful for me. Honestly, re revival, you know, I know it has a um a spiritual connotation, but for me personally, that that is a plus. <laughs> um, but um, you know, I like the idea of reviving your spirits creatively. I like the idea of reviving your creativity. I like the idea of reviving your motivation. So I am, I, if you couldn't tell, I'm leaning towards that one. Yeah. Thank you. Thrifty Apprentice is here, friends. If you do not already um, follow what he is doing here on YouTube and Instagram, please, please, please do. I cannot tell you how difficult it is to be a content creator, especially a YouTuber, trying to get that stinking YouTube algorithm to figure out who to show your videos to. It can take a long time and it has nothing to do with your talent. It has nothing to do with your skill. It has everything to do with the algorithm figuring out who you're for. And sometimes the algorithm is slow. So let's um, head on over uh, to the Thrifty Apprentice um, channel. Give him a subscribe. Give him a hey. Comments on his videos are going to help tremendously. So even if, if you're not ready to subscribe to another person, because I get it, I can only have so much in my feed. If you find a video, you want to comment, just give some thumbs up, some, you know, all the things, all of that helps. So thank you for being here. I know you've been um, just reviewing, well, I know you're not reviewing yet, but you've been doing unboxing my empty palettes. I know you're going um, through some of my supplies now, and you've been such a support to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Jennifer, you you should join Thrifty. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. All right, look at those subs. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, all right, all right. Cool. All right, we are, we're dry. So it's just like an orangey situation here. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I need to take a drink, y'all. I'm going to head to my ocean paper for this one because there is this divine, divine orange. And I'm, yeah, I'm mixing it over top a little bit of green that's already on the palette, but like whatever. Okay, I'm just going to add a little color in the middle, rinse my brush. My brush is damp and I'm going to slowly build out. See how saturated this color is? I'm going to slowly build this so I can make decisions. 
and changes. I'm going to start light. See, when I'm nervous about something, and this angle is weird, so I'm going to, when I'm nervous about something, I tend to go more by the rules. You'll see me be more of a rule follower when I am flipping nervous, all right? My beak is bigger, don't care. <clears throat> it's going to work out, it's fine. Um, and that is honestly a good practice. When you're nervous about something, when you don't feel the confidence, go back to the rules, friends. Go back to the rules, all right? That can give you some peace. That can give you some solace, right? And then you can always, you know, throw caution to the wind later on, later on. This is pretty dry, I think. All right, I'm still, I'm going to go to this beautiful color here. It's got more reddish going on, but I'm going to dab over on a paper towel. And, okay, so got some stuff going on just below the beak here and coming down here. I, by the way, loving this number six brush for this. Um, my particular brush has a really excellent point that I'm, I, uh, I just, I, I find myself going to again and again. Uh, just keep an eye on your spatial relationships. And now I'm thinking about these strokes right here on the neck. Lovely. Here's another little bit of advice that maybe you don't want, but friends, when you're doing a tutorial, please don't be so hard on yourself that every brush stroke you lay down has to look like the teachers, right? Like, please don't do that to yourself. You're here to have an experience. You've decided to do this tutorial because you, uh, you want to paint birds, let's say, right? I have been wanting to paint these darn birds for months. Does that experience being joyful hinge upon the fact that you lay every brushstroke exactly as your instructor did? Absolutely not. You can find joy. You can find satisfaction. You can feel accomplished after finishing this tutorial, even if your daggone bird is a completely different color. Okay, so please just remember that for yourself. It's really important because you can get yourself in a really unsightly tailspin mentally if you're just so concerned about being exacting, right? And I was even in that tailspin, honestly. Um, I know I'm kind of going off screen here. I was in that tailspin early on here. I was being a little, uh, I was being a little fuss budget about some things. And I had to pull myself out of it. I really did. I really did. Remember to get those, keep those questions coming in and put a few question marks before your question. So I'm more likely to see them. I'd appreciate it. If you want to go smaller, use a smaller brush with this. And I kind of almost feel like I do. Let's see how it feels. I'm going to bring out my triple zero. Um, the other thing that you, that can be helpful, but it also can backfire, and we're going to see if it backfires with me, is when you're nervous about a subject you're painting, um, like a, partic a particular detail area, let's say, like here, I'm into the, into the leaves, I will go smaller on my brush as to give my, as to kind of force myself to slow down so that I am kind of thinking, you know, there's a difference between fussing with detail and fussing and refussing, I call it fussing and discussing. There's a difference between that and slowing down and making more calculated decisions about the marks that you're putting down on the paper. Does that make sense? So I think sometimes kind of using a smaller brush, um, if you have the right mindset, if you remember that, okay, I'm using this smaller brush not to get more fussy, but instead, to slow myself down to make more mindful decisions, then it can really be helpful. Now I'm realizing here that there is this extra kind of butt feather here, but I'm not convinced as of right now that I even want to add it um, because I don't know if I need it. So I'm not going to add it yet. I may later, who knows? I may, 
Um, and I'm going to go up here also. And I want to, you know, my beak definitely got bigger. But I'm okay with that, I think. And I'm just going to define where the beak touches his face a little bit more and then blend that out, but not blend it perfectly. Right? Okay. He's cute. He's cute. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at comments. Oh, let me see if I have any questions. Y'all are just having a good time having a conversation. Um, I'm so glad to see that. <clears throat> well, <laughs> you're very supportive. And so I, I think it's fabulous that people are subbing and know more about you. Absolutely. So, yay. Your new art journal will make a perfect gift to myself. I would have to agree, Linda. <laughs> um, Tamara, I am using, Beth, thank you for reminding me. If you're just hopping on, friends, or if you're watching on replay and you just need a reminder, I am working from this book called Vibrant Watercolor Birds. It was sent to me kindly uh, as a gift from Madhu S. of Femme Visionary. And uh, check her out everywhere. I've got her details below. And I do have a link to this book. Um, in the supplies list, in the description of this video. Her style is exquisite. I mean, just, ah, look at that. Isn't that great? It's a very affordable book. And I am on step three. Um, actually, I want to go back here. I think she's got a little bit of like a rusty situation going on. I'm still in my ocean paper. I might bring in a little brown for my palette but I'm still using a lot of ocean paper. I adore ocean paper and honestly was definitely inspired by them um, during the creation of my palette. Their paints are really lovely and opaque for the most part. Um, just, just nice. I'm just going to put a few strokes of this darkness. I'm not going to do any fills or anything, just little little mm, touches, little something somethings. This is dark here, little strokes, do, do, do. Oh yeah, look at how that is just. Now these were originally to be the darker color, but I wanted to give a little additional depth. So I went in first with the, the first orange and then maybe a little down here. I changed things up down here. So why not continue the trend? And then maybe a few something something there okay oh i want to get that eye in so bad but she doesn't want me to yet okay so we are starting okay so we're getting into kind of the head it looks like an eggplanty type color so i'm mixing my purple from the art for joy sake palette with my brown, a little more purple. There we go. So something in this realm. Something like that. That makes sense. Okay. You don't want a ton. I'm staying with the smaller brush. I am liking this feeling of control. Ooh, is that too damp? You always want to check your dampness. And I love, this is where we're defining that beak some more. This is going to be satisfying. I just know it. And it comes down around here. Okay. And, oh yeah. I have officially been given permission to fill in that eyeball. That makes me happy. I love context and I find as an artist, I seem to need context earlier than most tutorials want to give it, you know, give permission for, if that makes any amount of sense. Um, and so I tend to add in contrast sooner. I tend to, um, yeah, I tend to break a lot of rules when it comes to um, adding details and contrast early in a painting. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm 
Uh, oh, I want to add these little boo-boos. And notice how these little textural moments are going in a direction. They're, they're going, they're curving along with the head. Does that make sense? Let me know if I could lift this up. I think I, I can paint soundly with this higher so you can see better. See, these little strokes here are following the curve of this head, right? So for example, you're going to, if you've got the bird's head here, right? I'm just going to draw right in the book because why not, right? In the beak, right? If you put those strokes kind of too straight and not following this curve right here, you see that? You want to follow that curve. You don't want to follow this curve. You don't want to follow this curve. You want to follow this curve. It's very uh, much a similar practice for filler, greenery, um, when you're working, you know, <clears throat> with um, floral compositions, any kind of organic compositions, right? I will tell you this, friends. I am adoring uh, using this smaller brush. It is giving me a sense of control which is making me feel uh, just safer in the whole process. So, um, but I don't feel like I am getting to a point where I'm being too fussy. It's actually loosening me up. So I think that is something to, to think about in painting in general is to know ways of giving yourself some calm, some reprieve, you know, and, and they might be ways that seem really not traditional. Like you would think that using a smaller brush is going to make you more fussy. Um, but you, you are learning you in this journey. And when you find something that feels good, feels right, and gives you the results you're after, you stick with it. You do it no matter what anybody says. And I'm just continuing along, <clears throat> just following. I actually, it looks like I kind of went ahead and I added some of that darkness early. Now, that's weird. Again, look at that image. Looks like stuff changed. It did change, but I, it's fine. It's fine. Basically, what I'm doing here is where there were dark moments that I added in the previous step, I'm just going to add little accents of this darker color in this step. Just add more accents of darkness. Now, oh, I realize there's a little bit of a outline. Okay, i got to take my glasses off for this one. A little outline going on on this beak. I'm usually not a fan of the outlines. It looks like I'm going to add a little texture like right here because we all know where like a bird's beak meets the feathers or vice versa that it, it it isn't a straight line. It's fluffy and lovely and okay. I mean, mine's not too shabby, not too shabby. I think I'm going to be able to really rein it in here um, when I get into the wing, I think. I think. Let me look at some questions, see if anything has come through. Uh, let that rest. Let my eyes rest a little bit. <clears throat> I love painting birds, especially flying birds. Oh, good point. Yeah. Speaking of flying birds, there's a couple in this book. Um, let me see if I can find them. Well, here's one. I mean, look at that. Like, It's like she's in flight, but she's also posed. It's really cool. I think that's what another thing that's so magical about this book is just the poses. Oh, I definitely, definitely want to do this owl. I'm obsessed officially. Like, look at this bald eagle. Oh, I should paint this for my dad for like Father's Day. He would love it. He would love it. My dad like loves, he's, you know, he um, was in the Navy in the 70s and um he just loves history he's very well read um and he has like i don't know if you grew up in the 80s i feel like we all had this it was like a gilded 
eagle sculpture that like hung a flat against your wall. I, f I feel like I was in so many of my friends' houses that had it. And like, that is just something my dad loved. It was just like, you know, yeah. Um, let's see, flying, flying birds. Okay, yeah, look at, what is this, a swallow? What is that? Mountain blue, no, or is it a bluebird? I don't know. It doesn't matter. He's flying. <clears throat> Flamingo. I love the mallard. Love the mallard. So adorable. I love the puffin. When we were in um, Scotland, my husband and I, I was over there for an editorial shoot years ago. I think it was 2017 or 18. I don't know. I can't remember. And we were there and there's this area where you climb up this big cliff and granted, it's steep, but it's not like treacherous. There's like a pathway, right? And you climb up, you do all this really intense, you know, exercise basically in hopes of spotting a puffin in real life. And uh, we did not see puffins, but they they hold a special place in my heart because of my, um, you know, almost dying walking up the hill. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, like, look at this with the little starburst. So cute. Sandhill crane and then the pelican. He's not, I don't know if he's in flight or if he's landing, but yeah, just, just so sweet. No, sweet's not the word. This one I want to do so badly because I love the dynamic shape of the kingfisher. Like I love, you know, some of these like in progress shots are so beautiful just on their own. Like, right? Next, we're going into this situation with kind of, it looks like a lighter version of this eggplant-ish color. I'm going to tone it down with a little ivory. <clears throat> so we're kind of in this realm now. Something like that. Okay. What is all over? I'm going to go back to my number six. I may not stay there, but I'm going to go back there. Um, This looks more lyrical to me. Like you really need to just have at it and be more sketchy about it. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm not going to try to follow the tutorial as much with this one because I fear that if I do, it'll just feel too rigid, right? Um, I'm going to come down here and do some of this and then I'll go back. I'm actually going to go back into that orangish area and kind of redefine that based on what I just did. You really, I firmly believe when you're doing tutorials, you need to give yourself blessings to, you know, go your own way at some point. You can go your own way. You knew I was going there. You knew I was going there. When I was in middle school, the kids used to call me radio. I don't know if I told you this before. Maybe I have. They used to call me radio because like I knew all the songs. And to this day, I'm very much the same way. I don't, I don't really care for how that worked out. I don't know. I don't like what I did there, but I really like what I did there. I actually want to do a little lifting. So anyway, I tend to have a photographic memory when it comes to songs, especially songs of the 90s and 80s. So, oh yeah, I like the lifting there. Maybe I want to do a little here because I like how this eggplant ran into that orange that I laid down just now. But I want, it, I want it to show a little more. So I'm going to kind of aggravate this area a little bit with some water and lifting. Yeah. And then down here, I don't know. Things got a little confusing in the pages. So I'm just going to do some lifting just to lighten up some areas. And then maybe come back later and zhuzh. But maybe not. I love lifting for... I call it positive lifting where you don't feel like you're necessarily correcting a mistake. You're revealing something that you would not have otherwise seen had you not lifted that top layer of color. And that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I, I don't feel, now maybe the lifting here is kind of like 
crowd control. <laughs> but I don't know. My shaping was different there than the than the instructors and it got weird. So I'm going to clear this area out and think about what I might want to do there instead. So I'm just going to give myself as much of a blank palette here as possible and get out of there for a little while. There we go. It looks weird. It looks funky. It looks rough. It looks not great, but it's okay because it's in progress. I just noticed that a little bit of an angular situation right there that I'm exaggerating. <clears throat> and there's, oh, there's this that comes from the upper, like that bottom corner of the eye. It kind of goes, yep. Yeah. It's kind of like a triangle. Hers is cleaner than mine. You can tell that she, I don't think she paints these step by step. You know what I mean? Like, She's got so much muscle memory with these birds. And then she's figuring out how to break them down step by step. And that is just impressive. There's something there. See, now you can come back. Did some of that lifting. All right. <clears throat> There's just a little bit here. Okay. Mine's getting fussy, 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 fussy. So I love that we're at this point now because I want to let everything bird-wise rest. Um, and again, her bird, the like the underpainting is so light, but that is not where it started. So I feel like, friends, if you're going to paint along with me, just go way light on your first layer. I'm probably going to go in with some acrylic gouache at the end here, probably this one, the beige. And brighten it up because I don't have as much contrast that as I would like. Now, I'm just going to go free willy here with the, the branch because this is my this is my safe space, right? This is where Christy feels comfortable, right? I'm going to leave a little margin there so that the little feet, the cute little feet don't get lost. Yay. Starting to look like bamboo, but whatever. And this is a great place to build up more contrast, right? Maybe this kind of curves down. I don't know. We're going to see as we start to add leaves. Let's do it. Leaves, leaves. This is the breathe. This is the point where you're like, looks like we made it. Uh, right? Yeah, this is the point where like you can just kind of chill, relax, do you color bump in all the way. We want lots of color bump in with these leaves. I'm going a little peachy. Oh, yes, I am. And don't think I'm not seeing all of these lovely opportunities for my liner brush. Don't you think I'm missing it? Because I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just having fun along the way. Don't forget those bubbles because I think those little bubbles make everything about this style super sweet. A couple over here. A couple over here. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is that these leaves are descending in size as they go away from the main branch. So that's just something cool to keep an eye on in terms of it's just it's just like cool factor, right? It's just going to make everything just kind of feel more dynamic if you do follow that particular, you know, rule, or if you will, from the original creator's um, tutorial. Now, I'm adding a big leaf here. Um, that goes off of the paper. I just want a little grounding going on. <clears throat> just want a little grounding. Add a little bit of the orange in there that was going on. And then I love this leaf, but I want to lift a little here. Yes. And then do it. I do. I, I think I like the purple. I'm going to do some of that. 
I like how some of her leaves overlap beautifully. CNC Music Factory in the house. Um, something like that. Sure, sure. Um, I want to let that dry a little bit. So I am going to go ahead with my acrylic wash and beige and see if it's going to be enough for me to lighten this up. I'm going to mix some white in there. I've got my acrylic gouache and white. I am finishing up my Stanley project between today and tomorrow. And <clears throat> using acrylic gouache is, is one of the ways that I'm, I'm doing just that. So yeah, 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 we really need the added contrast. Really needed it. I'm holding my brush almost perpendicular, really low down on the barrel, right on the ferrule. And you might be wondering, well, are you going to be able to paint over that acrylic wash? It will resist once dry. It will certainly resist anything I try to do to it. Doesn't mean I can't work with it, but it will resist. <clears throat> actually like some of the added texture this is giving. Just have to make sure I don't have too much. And I also don't want to, oh, there's some really lovely gradients. I wish I would have caught on to that little discrepancy sooner. It's, again, no shade to the artist. That It could have just been a production thing that you know with the book and the the team that did the book um but if you're painting along watch out for that and just go way light with your washes all right now i'm going to use the liner and get in between another thing that i could do to kind of bring myself out of this is I, I could have painted this all dark and gone in and done this in kind of a reverse fashion, but I wasn't really feeling like that at all. <clears throat> so anywho, you get what you get and you don't get upset sometimes. And this is really more defined here too. Interesting. All right. That's better. Not too bad for my first foray into the aviary. All right. Well, it's not my first, but <clears throat> it's not something I do a lot. Take that for later and let's go in and do something I do do a lot and that I love, which is linear detail. And we're going to come down here with some. We're going to come here. Why is, okay, I need more. My brush. I'm adding more than, definitely more than she has. Because that's how I roll. <clears throat> There's some over here. Embrace those cauliflower effects. Be okay with them. Right? And you're just kind of connecting. Remember, everything needs to kind of have a home base. This is your general home base for all those thin linear detail moments. All right? Okay. She cute. Hers definitely cleaner. I want to try it again. Definitely want to try this again. Using what I've learned, knowing what I know. 
you get to a point in a painting, friends, where <clears throat> you have to make some decisions based on all the things that you've done to this point. And this is especially true for a tutorial because you may have made some decisions that veered away from the tutorial like I have, and that is completely fine. But then don't be afraid to make some decisions to, that will better serve the, the the changes you decided on. Don't be afraid to veer. Don't be afraid to edit and adjust, okay? It's really important that you feel that strength to do that because your painting is now a different painting than what you're seeing here. You've got to get in there, be confident enough to know, yeah, I think this would work better now. Do you know what I mean? Like you really need to be able to go there for yourself. Absolutely. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to kind of force. Remember, this was an area that I put the um, gouache on. It's still a little wet, so it's actually letting me do some things, which is cool. And then let's see if it's just going to push back. It's going to bite back when I try to do what I'm about to do. Not yet. That's because it's still a little wet. I'm going to just try to put some of these back. Yeah, okay, you get a nice light touch on a damp acrylic. It's essentially acrylic, acrylic gouache. Acrylic gouache is a, is a medium that was really designed for graphic artists, acrylic artists who wanted a matte, a strong matte finish, because traditional acrylic um, does not offer that whatsoever. You get um, a, some feel a very distracting sheen at times. So I find it lovely. All right. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna stop fussing right now. I wanna. I wanna like. Okay, I lie. One more thing. Oh, one more thing. I want contrast here. This area got weird. I want contrast. Yes. Okay. Now I'm done. But anywho, she ain't perfect, but I'm still so glad I did it. Yeah, absolutely. Reading through the art tutorials. Savannah, that's true. I want to put this up. I was told that when you're trying a new recipe for the first time, you should read it all the way through before even starting. And the same is true for art tutorials. Helps so much. Absolutely. Um, and I'll be honest, I skimmed but I did not intensively read. I'm so visual, it's terrible of me. Um, but anywho, super fun, super, the, the way this tutorial is um, delivered is extremely friendly in terms of if you, if you just wanted to do it visually, um, it works really well. You're gonna pick up on some nuances in, in any tutorial that has the written word as well. So I 100% agree with that. Um, yeah. I was nervous. Uh, and I, I'll be honest, like, I feel like my nervousness was justified because this was not effortless for me. But I'm still super glad I did it. And I feel like, to the point that I feel like I want to do it again. I want to try another bird for sure. Thank you, Wonder Woman. And the flowers and leaves. Of course. Yeah, that's my jack. My, that's my shtick. Um, have you ever shown how you dip your paintbrush in the water or paint? So curious. I mean, I do. Um, it just depends, you know, if I'm like a liner brush, I make sure I take a larger brush usually and wet down the area so that I can really glide through it and twirl through it, if that makes sense, you know? Um, so that is something that I do that, I don't know, may be a little different from what somebody else does. I also have, um, a paper towel always like right here if you look this is all brushes and paper towel 
So I, at any point, have easy, easy, easy access to just a little swipe here, a little swipe there, right? And this is another good thing, too, to come back. Just this is not about dipping your brush, but giving your eyes a little bit of time to rest so you can come back and maybe add a stroke or two that will really potentially make the difference in an area that was previously bothering you a bit, right? Um, I find that the most impactful moments at the end of a painting are not the, the strokes that like what I'm doing now where I'm like shaping and reshaping. I find the most impactful strokes are the ones where it's like touch. Yes, that did it. You know what I mean? Um, but also that's, that's, that's difficult, man. That's, that's, that's something. But that comes from muscle memory. That comes from confidence. Um, but it also can just be like luck and happenstance. But every time one of those lucky moments where you lay down a stroke is what I mean, where you lay down a stroke and all is right with the world, that stroke just taught you so much. Am I right? That stroke just taught you so much. So I actually encourage you to, to do this kind of stuff because you're basically setting yourself up for potential big educational moments, right? Um, so if you don't do some of the fussing and the, that kind of stuff, then, you know, you might be losing out on some educational moments. If you abandon that painting because it's frustrating you, you're potentially missing out on a really beautiful aha moment that maybe has a lot to teach you. Friends, I hope you had a blast with this one. I hope you paint along. And if you're watching on replay, um, please get into comments. Let me know if you're trying it. Um, Lynn, I'm so glad you have courage to try now. I am, I am fierce. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate you. Yeah, definitely. Friends, go pick up this book. I, um, you know, I'm sent a lot of books. Uh, this, this might be one of my favorites. Uh, I just, oh, look at the woodpecker for the love. Oh, look at, I, how I missed that one. What is, what kind of bird is this? Anyway, I, I'm sent a lot of books, but for the love, I just really appreciate the, the skill that went into creating this book, the step-by-step. -step. And I also just so appreciate the aesthetic of uh, Madhu's artwork. Just fantastic. And can we just talk about the, the breast feathers on this bird? This might be the one I do next. Anywho, this was a blast. I hope you join me next week where I am literally going to be um, testing out the palettes that I think I'm going to pack for my trip to Europe. I'm going to be gone for three weeks. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you what I think I'm bringing, how I'm organizing it, um, swatching, painting it with a little bit, a little bit just to make sure I'm happy with my choices, taking questions about traveling, painting, journaling, cityscapes, you know, city sketching that kind of thing. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot. So I do hope you join me. It's already scheduled. So you can go ahead and set yourself a timer. And uh, yeah, friends, this was a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I will see you soon for more happy painting.